Hello, my name is Adriano Cardoso, and I will present a brief summary of my work to obtain a master's degree in mechanical engineering by PUC Rio. The project is linked to the LMMP. My advisor was Professor Márcio Carvalho, and my co-advisor was Dr. Damer Quinones. My research seeks to find pressure and temperature, transient response in a couple stratified well bore reservoir system. Well formation tests are usually performed to determine rock properties of a reservoir, and the obtained data has often been interpreted based on the assumption that the reservoir is homogeneous in the vertical direction, and described by a 1D model. However, many reservoirs are found to be composed of different number of layers that have different characteristics. Production oils in such reservoirs may receive oil from more than one layer. In stratified reservoir system, the pressure and temperature behavior are not necessarily the same as in a single layered system and rarely reveals the same average properties of the entire system. The prediction of the characteristics of individual layers is important to describe properly the reservoir and improve production management. Conventional well tests assume isothermal behavior of the flow in the reservoir. However, Recent studies show that considering only pressure data can lead to misinterpretation due to thermal effects in habitat, specifically in high transmissivity reservoirs, such as in Brazilian press salt reservoirs. During field tests, the evaluation of reservoirs with several layers is done through a well test called multi-layer test. However, this test is complex, time-consuming, requires the pipe knowledge of the reservoir profile, in addition to the need for flow and pressure measurements of individual layers. There is a challenge to propose a protocol to obtain the characteristics of multi-layer reservoirs from pressure and temperature data obtained at a single point above the reservoir. Based on these motivations, the objectives of this work is to develop a numerical transient thermal model that allows the stratified reservoir analysis. Identify and understand the phenomenon that occurs between the stratified reservoir and the production well. And to find a protocol that satisfies the stratified reservoir characteristics through pressure and temperature data measured at a single position along the production well. The mathematical model that describes the transient flow and heat transfer that occurs along the well consists of conservation equations such as mass, momentum, and energy balancing for a slightly compressible fluid. Consider the source terms for the mass and energy that comes from the stratified reservoir. The final form of the mass conservation equation for the reservoir is obtained using the concepts of isothermal compressibility and isobaric thermal expansion for the oil, connate water, and rock and the momentum conservation equation in the form of Darcy law for a flow in porous medium. The energy equation for a stratified reservoir take into account child Thompson heat and cooling, adiabatic fluid expansion and compression, conduction and convection effects are given by this equation in terms of pressure and temperature. In addition, density and porosity were considered as functions of pressure and temperature. After mass test analysis and validation, is then compared three different reservoirs with the same total transmissivity. The first one is homogeneous in blue discontinuous line. The second is a stratified with communication between the layers, which we call cross flow, in red discontinuous line. And the third one certified without communication between the layers in the literature called coming lab in green discontinuous line. Here we present the graphs of pressure and temperature over time for the drawdown and build up periods. Initial results showed that the analysis of the pressure and temperature plots over time during drawdown and build up, despite present different pressure and temperature graph levels, does not present characteristics that identify the stratification. 
Here, the same three reservoirs, homogeneous in blue, stratified with cross flow in red, and stratified without cross flow in green, have their pressure and temperature results interpreted by a Bordeaux derivative method. The use of the Bordeaux derivative for the interpretation of pressure results during drawdown test reveals the presence of heterogeneity, characteristic of stratified reservoirs. A minimum in the pressure derivative appears for the stratified reservoirs with communication between the layers, the red one. However, a signature of stratification does not appear in case of stratified reservoir without communication between the layers or homogeneous reservoirs. The use of Bordeaux derivative for temperature reveals a different behavior for homogeneous and stratified reservoirs, both in the case of with communication or not between the layers. And the use of the pressure and temperature derivatives together allows identification of the reservoir. Here we present a pressure profile inside the, res the uh, stratified reservoir for three instances of time, early times, intermediate times, and final times. Here we have the vertical direction, the radial direction, the upper layer with the higher permeability, the bottom layer with the lower uh, permeability. As soon as the reservoir starts to produce, the difference in permeability between the two layers leads to different pressure drops in the radial direction. As a consequence, a pressure gradient in the vertical direction is created, driving flow from the less permeable with the great pressure to the more permeable with the lower pressure. As the flow progresses, the pressure is established and the flow in the vertical direction vanishes. After the stabilization, the reservoir behavior is similar to a homogeneous reservoir since there is no vertical flow. The animation presents a succession of vertical velocity profiles inside the reservoir. At early times, the pressure gradient between the layers gives rise to a vertical flow, and as time goes, since this gradient decreases, the vertical velocity decreases too. We can see that the vertical flow is intense at the beginning and concentrated in the region close to the wellbore. The graph on the right highlights the drop in speed throughout the test. At different stands, the vertical velocity between the layers was calculated. Despite the difference in flow between the layers, as time progresses, the hydrostatic gradient is extended to the reservoir and the vertical flow fades away. We repeat the test for the free stratified reservoir with the same radial permeability, but with different vertical permeabilities. The pressure difference between two layers was monitored during a drawdown test inside the reservoir, at a position of 1.5 meter far from the wellbore. In the beginning of the test, very early times, the stratified reservoir behaves as if it were no flow between layers. As time goes up, due to difference in radial velocities between the layers, there is an appearance of a pressure differential greater than the hydrostatic gradient, and this gives rise to a vertical flow between the layers. Advancing a little more in time, the hydrostatic gradient which dominates the well's behavior is also extended to the reservoir, cessing the vertical flow. At this point, the reservoir starts to behave as if it were homogeneous. The higher the vertical permeability, the faster the reservoir approaches the hydrostatic gradient, and inversely, the lower the vertical permeability more time the reservoir needs to equilibrate the pressure. Different reservoir heterogeneities can present the same pressure derivative graph, such as the example present of a reservoir with a central region of high permeability, case 3, and a certified reservoir, case 2. As you can see, they have similar graphs, pressure derivative graphs. Analysis of only pressure results in a one-dimensional way would indicate the presence of heterogeneity. However, it would be unable to distinguish among the cases presented. However, when it's analyzed the temperature derivative, once again, the use of pressure and temperature together can be used to identify the stratified reservoir. Homogeneous reservoir in the vertical direction present derivative graphs different from stratified reservoir, and this particular could be used to distinguish, to distinguish and identify the reservoirs. The position for pressure measurement is not important for this analysis, since the derivative graphs are similar. 
However, the temperature measurement is very influenced by the heat loss to the outside environment. Because of this, positions along the well just above the reservoir are ideal for identifying the reservoir. The heat exchange by thermal diffusion between the wellbore and the neighborhood is the most significant thermal phenomenon in the wellbore and becomes more accentuated as we go up. As a result, heterogeneous in the reservoir have their effect on temperature minimizer when taking measurements at a higher position. This can be seen by comparing two reservoirs, one homogeneous and other stratified. The temperature results obtained just above the reservoir show significant difference, but the measurements at the top of the reservoir are similar. Well, this work provides a tool for the two-dimensional and non-isothermal analysis of a radial reservoir. Density and porosity were considered as function of pressure and temperature. The combination of the interpretation of the results of pressure and temperature but the derivatives allows the identification of stratified reservoir for data from a single position in the well just above the reservoir region. Well, I would like for, to thank for your attention, the organization and the sponsor for making this work possible.